Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm super excited for today's podcast for a number of reasons. But before we talk to our husband and wife guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, the mini Batman himself, who actually now has a full bat, Six Sigma, you know him, you love him, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net landmodo.com and most importantly if you're not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you i'm super excited man these are my favorite podcasts (laughs) they really are i think they're the listeners favorite podcasts you know you know what's cool about this one is that our guest today sat in front of me, like right here where I was, okay? And I saw them like start from like nothing to what they're gonna tell us today. I've seen them grow literally like right in front of my eyes. It's amazing because, you know, they were in flight school. I'll let let them tell the story, but like they were flight school. I watched them like grow. I I saw the the deer in the headlight looks like when I'm talking about getting the list and like, what do I do? They also made me jealous so many times with their beautiful views, scenic views, because they took a lot of these flight school calls out in the wildlife. So I'm excited to hear their story because I I feel like a proud papa here. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like your, it's like your little acorns are growing into an oak tree. <laughs> you know. So, without further ado, I do want to just remind everybody: today's podcast is sponsored by TL Folio. Go to tlfolio.com. Unlimited funds. Um, Scott and I are eventually going to do a webinar on this, but John and Valerie Burnett, a husband-wife team, are crushing it in the land investing business. So this is always my favorite pod type of podcast when we get to talk to our uh, students who are doing the business, they've gone through the journey, it's really recent, it's really fresh, and we sort of get this insight and this insider look at what it's like to go through it. And so the first question, John and Valerie, is how did you guys even find us? Yeah, so we, um, we st- I guess it, it goes back to just about two years ago. Um, we're in Northern Idaho right now. A couple of years ago, we also lived in Northern Idaho and moved to Jackson, Wyoming. Um, on the way over there, we listened to Cashflow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. And it really, um, it was recommended to us by someone. We just thought, let's listen to it. Let's just make them happy. And it really shifted our mindset. Prior to that point, you know, I, I had told Valerie, I am an employee person. I always want to be an employee. I never want to start a business. Um, and then we listened to that and it really shifted our perception of what it means to be an employee and what it could look like to invest or to own your own business. Yeah, we realized there was a whole nother side to life that I think a lot of people don't really realize is out there. You know, there's the investor and there's the business owner quadrant and you know, so many people are just caught in this rat race of being an employee and some, you know, we need employees in the world. We need that. But John and I realized, and this is kind of a cool part, like just something we realized about each other was that we both had investor and, you know, kind of a business mind about us. So we were like, Ooh, we're kind of interested in this. This is cool. We could do this. Mm -hmm. And we really want to. And, but we kind of needed to know why, because we're like, you know, it's not, we don't need to make a bunch of money. We don't need to be rich. Like, what do we really, really desire? And the um, thing that we came up with was we just, we want more time. We want more time with our family. Mm -hmm. We want more time with each other. We want to be able to do other things besides working. Like we've always wanted to be, you know, doing more ministry in our church. Um, You know, we just like couldn't even believe it. Kind of sky's the limit with your time if you're not having to work a nine to five job all the time. 
So we kind of gradually got to that mindset. And from there, uh, we got involved in, um, and I think this was actually a really good thing for us. We got involved in a business that was really challenging. It was really, uh, so we went to Jackson Hole, big vacation area, and we were involved in the vacation business. We were doing- Employees again. Employees, yeah. Yeah, as employees. And so I was managing a business that did vacation rentals um, for about 350 different properties. We do reservations and stuff, and we managed a handful of those as well. Um, and it was, it was really good, um, but really challenging and relatively inflexible because whenever anybody is off, you know, they're wanting to travel, they're wanting to be there. So holidays, weekends, that's when everybody is, is um, you know, there and giving you business. And so um, there wasn't a whole lot of flexibility when it came to scheduling and stuff like that. And we had two little kids. Um, and Actually, just, we were just pregnant with Oh yeah, we, we had yeah. one and then we had one on the way. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, so. and so it was, um, so that, it reached a point where it was pretty challenging. Um, I was um, seeing our kids, so the, or our, our first um, kid, about an hour, um, a half hour to an hour a day. Um, and so that was really tough. Um, I was out of the office for a good amount of time and it was a stressful work environment. So I would come home and be stressed with our child, you know? <laughs> so it, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, I can totally relate. I mean, I remember when I was working my investment banking job, I literally would wake up in the morning, my children were asleep. Yep. And so my wife's like, don't get the kids, right? Um, and then I would come home and she, he was a baby. He was like, I want to say six months old. Yep. And when I, got, when I got home, he was literally cranky. So it was like, mm-hmm. it was like that time, like he was just about ready to get to bed. So my wife would give me the baby I would go under a fan with the ambient noise, <laughs> get him to sleep, and then put him to bed. And that was literally 20 minutes, five days a week with my son. And it was heartbreaking. And But well, the funny thing about it was that all my friends were doing the same thing. It was just, yeah. didn't see him in the morning, put him to bed. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe would go to the park on the weekends. But then... Once I was able to quit my job and do land investing full time, like it was, it was just a whole different world. Now, look, I'll be honest, the jury's still out on my three kids. That's a good or bad thing, but <laughs> it was, you know, for me selfishly, it's been, it's been amazing. And, uh, and now you're actually replicating that as well, because how long did it take before you were able to quit your job, John? So I um, started full school in July of 2017, and I quit my job um, at the end of March of this wow. year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, but that, that employee experience just really drove us just like gung-ho to figure something out. We hadn't found the land business stuff yet, um, but we just knew, you know, we had listened to the qu- cash flow quadrant we're like we hadn't done anything since then we're like it's time we have to figure out a solution yeah and so um john started listening to a bunch of real estate podcasts to and from work um and we found two that we really liked it was one was um kevin bupps um and then the other one was matt terrio's Mm -hmm. um what um and so we both really like those, but John had time to listen to them and he did it back and forth from work. And um, then he, he, he was like, well, let's start signing up for, let's do something. Let's pull triggers. So we signed up for single family housing um, um, investing with Matt Terrio. That was the first program that we signed up for. Um, but what we soon realized, we took it and we were like, wow, they're giving us a bunch of systems. This is Awesome. It was really, really good. And it's actually kind of similar to what the, uh, the processes that Land Geek does. But, but the, the problem was that we just, we needed something that we could do remotely. And um, everything we were looking at there, I think it can be done remotely, but it, was, it would just be really, really hard. Um, and so we were talking about like driving an hour and a half every weekend with, um, then we had a, a newborn. <laughs> 
and you know putting up these um, you know the guerrilla you marketing know. signs, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, anyways, that's kind of where we were at, and uh, and then we listened to Kevin Buck's podcast. Mark was mm -hmm. on the podcast, and I just listened to that, and it just made a lot of sense. Um, and so I came home um, at that point. We had a two week old. And, um, you know, I talked to Val and I just said, I think, I think this is what we need to be doing. And yeah. so we both listened to the, we both listened to the podcast together. We talked about it. We're like, this, this makes a lot of sense. And it's something that we can do remotely. Um, and so we hopped on a call with a coach and, you know, and then after talking to them, we we're kind of debating between the toolkit and flight school and then, you know, after that conversation really decided that flight school was right for us. Yeah. So we jumped right in. We're going to do this all the way. We weren't going to do it halfway or anything like that. We were just like, this is the way we're going to get to financial freedom. You know, we just, right, right. Yeah. And stuff. And cause every time we would talk to one of you guys, we're like, this is possible. This is going to happen. Like mm -hmm. these guys did it. We're going to do it too. Yeah. Um, and I think that yeah. like for us to, you know, I tend to be an optimist when I come into these situations, you know, it's just like, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to knock everybody out of the park. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just kill this thing. It's going to be great. And, but in reality, you look at it and you're like, okay, we've got two kids under two, you know, we're married. I've got a full-time job. We really need help. And in reality, there's a lot of challenges that we're facing that are going to pull us in the the opposite direction of where we want to go yeah and so that's kind of where um that's that was the big clincher for us on flight school we really wanted the live support and also the accountability that it would provide and that was exactly what it is i mean yeah i get emotional like even talking to you scott like it's it's it was so practical straightforward i mean you gave us like i mean every single time a session would be over we're like are you kidding me they just gave us like so many systems that we would have had to like maybe trial and error for like many, many years. We just felt so blessed. Yeah. We felt so um, privileged to be, yeah, I don't know. We just felt like we were getting like something for free, even though we did pay a little bit for flight school, but it was like, man, we're paying like less than a college education for like a chance at financial freedom for our whole, for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, we got to the end of flight school and Scott did this like, great, you know, inspirational speech at the end, but really actually what it was, was, you know, a heartfelt, like he was so excited for us to experience what he did. Like, I mean, he knew what it felt like to be financially free now. He knew what it meant to like not be and what it, it meant to be and what it meant for his family. And so he just got really excited for us. And I literally just started crying. I was like, Oh, I know because we are going to do this. You know, we're going to do this. God, do you remember this? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> in fact, someone from their class, uh, not too long, a few months back actually went back and posted just that segment of the video, uh, to their, to their, uh, class. And I rewatched it and, and I'm like, I, I honestly got to say, like, I don't end every flight school thing. I, I always end with like an upbeat thing. But I will tell you that July class, I can't remember why, but I think I do know now that Valerie's talking about it, but like, I've never been able to replicate that one. Like that was like, <laughs> I was like, go back, like make the, just say here, watch this. I can't do it any better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Watch this video. This is how excited I am for you. But really it meant a lot. And I mean, we just knew this was going to change our lives, but we were going to have to work really hard. You know, I'm like really glad that you were honest with us about how hard it was going to be, the dips that we were going to experience, that kind of thing. And that's actually what led us to go into coaching straight away. Yeah. I mean, we knew we needed, we were going to need some support along the way, accountability along the way. I mean, John and I are lucky we had each other, Yeah. but we actually needed even more than that. We needed, it, it was starting a business, you know, um, although we had basically we felt like we were buying a franchise <laughs> because it was all set up. Yeah. It still was going to take a lot of work. Plus we had full-time, you know, full-time jobs. I had a three week baby, you know, when I uh, started flight school and then John was just managing four businesses. So um, we got straight into coaching. We were blessed to get Eric um, Peterson. I mean, what an amazing coach he's been. Um, 
but uh, what we had to start doing um, because we had full-time jobs and I had yeah. the babies, we had to start waking up at five in the morning, doing our follow-ups at 5 a.m. Um, John was working during his lunch breaks to post ads. Oh no, he po posted ads at five in the morning too. Yeah. You know, at lunchtime, um, he was doing the marketing too, lots of the marketing side. And I was actually at, on the nap breaks yeah. for the kids. And then um, when the kids went to bed, then we would do the business some more. And yeah. And we would have like 30 minutes to an hour before we went to bed. I, you know, and I was oh. doing all of the client service stuff. So I was contacting the leads. I had one hour, half an hour to an hour a day to do it because the kids were sleeping and I didn't want to, I didn't want to take time away from them. I couldn't really, it was like actually impossible. So, um, but anyway, we were like, we're going to do this. And it was crazy, to be honest. It was a really hard thing. But um, the one thing we remember is we kind of begged um, Eric, yeah. could we just slow down a little bit? Yeah, we kind know? of reached a point after Christmas and we were like, um, we, uh, we, were, we were tired. And <laughs> we knew that I was going to be done with my job in a few months. And so I was like, we're, you know, we're, we're just going to slow down a little bit. It's going to be OK. And then Eric kind of gave us a kick us in the butt speech. You wouldn't think of Eric, but he's definitely a butt kicker. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were convinced he was going to just let us off the hook because we kind of gave him a sob story. And yeah. he was like, you guys, as long as your marriage isn't in trouble, you need to keep going. Yeah. And we're like, ah, okay. <laughs> so, so that was awesome because I think we were just in a big dip, you know, and um, he just really helped us. We needed the coaching through it. Um, mm -hmm. So um, the other thing we had to decide was how fast did we want to get out of the rat race? Okay. And part of the thing that we had to decide was how to, how to get that quicker. So yeah. um, we really liked the game cash flow. Um, yeah, great <laughs> game. Also, yeah, that was a really good game for us to play because, and John became like an expert at it. But one of the things, the reason why John wins cash flow every single time is because he's very conscious about how to increase your cash flow, but also decrease your expenses at the same time. I mean, pay off those things that you're paying, you know, how do you decrease your decrease your expenses. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we needed to do was sit down and see how we were going to do that quickly and how yeah. fast we wanted to get out of that rat race. And we kind of, we reached a point, I mean, the cost of living is so high in Jackson Hole. And then we had family in Northern Idaho. It wasn't a, it wasn't a bad move to move back. We love it here. And so we reached this point where we were like, you know, we could, we actually decreased our expenses by about 75% in the move. Wow. Has, have there been any expenses that were cut that, you really, really miss that you might trade some of that freedom and flexibility and, and take that hit I for mean, lifestyle? Not, not really, I think. I mean, the biggest expense is, was like rent, you know? And yeah, we don't have like car payments and things like that. You know, yeah. like we are pretty conscious about that yeah. anyways, but. We did move, we're, we're on one vehicle now, but part of that's just so easy because everything's within walking distance here. And so we only really need one car, you know, whereas, you know, uh, back in, in Jackson Hole, I had a commute of 30 minutes a day. And so it's like either one of us is just going to be stranded, you know, or like, right. that's kind of the yeah, and we could have done this like slower if we wanted to, you know, it, um, but to us, it was like, we didn't, our lifestyle wasn't maintainable, yeah. you know, especially with the full, you know, we were trying to do the land business and the uh, working the other businesses. It just wasn't sustainable for us. So we really needed to quickly yeah. move. And I would say, you know, not sustainable. Like we couldn't have done that for like 30 years, but we did do it and we could do it. You know, it was right. definitely doable and it was definitely worth it. Yeah. Right. Right. So if you're listening to this podcast and you know, what advice would you give to somebody that's, you know, maybe they don't love their job they're a young couple, they've got young kids, you know, they're, they're in the rat race. Like what would be f some, some just actionable advice to have them sort of replicate or duplicate exactly your success so that they could do exactly what you've done where, I mean, what's life like now? I mean, just kind of paint the picture real quickly. 
Yeah, oh. it's a, it's substantially better. I mean, we are like, <laughs> it's like peace. Yeah. It's like, it's freedom. I mean, we see well, each other. John and I are like seeing each yeah. other so much more. And well, and we've just like, I mean, the, the, one of the biggest things is that I've literally quadrupled my time with the kids during the work week. You know, that's crazy. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. One time we got, um, during, during the whole crazy time when we were trying to, um, do all the business and, you know, the other jobs at the same time, we got what was called hand, foot and mouth disease. It was really fun, but um, <laughs> it, it took us out of work for seven days. And yeah, um, so I was I was at home for seven full days, and it was it was pretty pretty miserable. And um, but during that whole situation, this was um, this was probably a month before we we moved. We quit the job. Uh, yeah, yeah. And during that whole situation, the one thing that our son Gideon said. And dozens of times a day, just over and over again, it's daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home. Um, and, it, you know, it's just it was such a good reminder that, like, we're this doing This is the why right we're thing. doing this, you know? And so now, yeah, instead of, like, a half an hour to an hour, John's home, like, four to five hours a day. I mean, with the well, kids. I mean, they're, he's seeing them with, uh, seeing that, them that much more. And so, yeah. um, and then I was able to um, just not I don't have to work at all right now like I I'm I'm just focusing straight on the kids all day and it's just been wonderful um and then John's focusing on the business and it's just like that is helping so much with the business it's and now it's now it's kind of turning into that Ferrari that yeah. we need it to be yeah, right uh, right but yeah so coming back to your question of what advice you would give I think um one of the big things is just is um, I think the first thing is do something. Um, it's so easy when you have this desire. I mean, who doesn't want to be financially free? Everybody wants to be financially free. Um, but it's so easy. Uh, I, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people who have those desires and they've just been looking for something for years and haven't taken any action because they're looking for the perfect model. Um, and I think that the key is to you know, A, just start taking steps forward. And I think one of the biggest things is, um, is education. Um, and I, the other thing is, I think we, when we looked at, you know, the investment that we would make both in flight school and coaching, um, we did, and Valerie mentioned this, we thought of it like a franchise. Franchise, um, that whole idea is something that makes a lot of sense to us. You know, if you're starting at a restaurant, the likelihood of success is relatively low. Um, but if you're starting on a franchise, you have a successful system already given to you and the success rate is far higher. And that was kind of our same mentality. It's like, we don't want to create our own system. We want to find a system that works and we want to plug and play. And, um, and we want to learn from other people's mistakes um, as much as possible, rather than relying on ourselves to make all the mistakes to educate ourselves. And so um, with that, with all that said, um, I think education is something that is worth investing in if you're going to use it. And so um, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. And yeah, um, well, and to come up with your why, I mean, if you're just going to, you know, get rich, to be honest, that's just like not like a really personal reason i mean it's fun to have money and stuff like and it is freeing but you need to figure out why you're doing something because scott talks a lot about in flight school that you're going to experience some dips you know you're not going to have a sale maybe for a week and a half two weeks i don't know what it is and you're going to kind of feel down and you need something to push you through that mm -hmm. you know you need to understand why you're doing it you know you have to have enough drive and then um, my biggest thing is like, yeah, invite, account of, invite accountability into the whole thing um, and coaching. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's, the, yeah, definitely the other piece is like, um, it's, it's also easy to hit something like this and say, I'm going to be unlike anybody else. I am going to be enormously successful because I'm going to work so incredibly hard. And there's, I think there's, a, there's an element of that that's incredibly healthy. You know, you should be very gung-ho. But also, I think you need kind of a healthy dose of reality alongside that, which is, 
I need, um, I need accountability. I need help because there's going to be other stuff that hits you in life and, um, things that are, that you're excited about can, um, at different times be substantially less exciting and you have to push through regardless. And so having some level of accountability alongside that is, really important too. And discipline, you know, you guys talk about the mailing and the marketing and stuff and you know, it's like you have to do that stuff. Otherwise you're not going to be successful. You have to keep doing the things that seem a little bit like monotonous. And that's discipline. That's so good for you in your life. You know, in your whole life it goes across everything. Yeah. So learning how to kind of get through some of those hard times would be consistent and have discipline um is a big good skill that we learned through this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. 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 Scott Todd, are you proud Papa? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean like, you know, I, I, geez, they listen to me. I got to tell you, like you know, you're doing flight school and you know, like uh, flight school is really weird because there's so many people on it. I don't mean like there's hundreds. I mean like there's, you know, 10, 10 people on there. It's not possible to understand or to know if people, if what you're saying is resonating with people, right? Like, because mm -hmm. it's not like that I'm sitting there saying, okay, Valerie, did you get that? You know, it's, it's almost like teaching a class where you're at the front of the room and you got to believe that people are listening, right? Like you got to believe that they're listening and then they show you that they're listening by the, by how they take action, right? And so then, you know, to, to hear or to see, like I remember like John and Valerie, they would sit there, they'd sit outside. Okay. They, they would, I think sometimes they were sitting by a fire mark, like, you know, like, <laughs> talking about, like wow. greens. You know, like, they're making me jealous over here. I'm like, I'm like, you know, in Florida, I'm thinking like, man, that looks beautiful out there. It was hard for me to concentrate with them in the picture. And then, <laughs> you know, like, you know, it, they would come along and they didn't necessarily like, um, you don't know, like you don't know if it's, if it's clicking with them or not. And then you start to see some of their successes. You start to see like, okay, they're doing it. They're, they're, they're kind of taking action. Yeah. And you know that the recipe is going to work, right? Like we talk about just following the recipe. Mark, you and I know that the system works if they just follow the system. Right. And so John, John and Valerie, how long did it take before you did your first deal? And, and what's been your best deal so far? Um, so, I think it was a month and a half, maybe. Um, maybe it's, it was either a month or a month and a half. It started flight school in July. The first deal was in August. Scott, is that is that typical with your flight school students? About a month, month and a half to to buy a property. I think. Oh, really buy or did we do a buy? Was that oh, to sell? Yeah, we bought in August. We probably. Oh yeah, and we sold in October. Yeah. Um, or something like that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I, you know, it's yeah, kind of a slow, steady process, to be honest, because, you know, I don't know, like, unless you're working it full time, I mean, you're, you know, it's a, it's, for us, it was a slow, steady process, but we had to push through and, um, but we could just see the business was building upon itself. I mean, that was so encouraging. It's like, okay, this is a note that's going to last us like six or seven years. We're building our paychecks, you know, and it's just like, it's so different than, you know, being an employee because you're just like, oh my gosh, like, there's no end to this. This is so amazing. This is so different, you know? But um, yeah, so it took us a little while, but it was slow and steady or whatever, and we did it. You know, we're, we're not like this, you know, magic bullet, like amazing couple that's doing amazing. But I think that the, the thing is, is just we're working hard, you know, and we're keep going. And we knew that, we knew that you guys did it. So we're going to do it too. And we might do it a little slower. We might do it faster than others we don't know but we're gonna do it you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I feel like, yeah go ahead scott well, well what i was gonna say is look there's two there's two things that i see in john and valerie right especially in talking to them we all have desires like every one of us has desires i think that the people that that do what what john and valerie have done they have one other component to it and it's it's ambition right because we can have all the desire in the world and we're like, man, I sure want to, I want to get rid of this job. I don't want to be here anymore doing this. I want my own time freedom. That's desire. The ambition says, I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to stay up late. I'm going to give this thing everything I have. And then the one thing that they kept saying to themselves, and I hear Valerie say this all the time, 
And it's, you know, think, think of it as like the four minute mile. The four minute mile says, man, the minute that someone broke the four minute mile, other people realized that it could be done. They went off and did it. John and Valerie kept saying to themselves, if all these people can do this, well, then so can we. And so they combined desire, ambition, all into one. And this is what you get. This is what you get when you combine those two things together. Right. I know for me, that's why I love the idea of flight school, because if you just have the toolkit, you're off on your own, you're doing it on your own. And when you hit that first brick wall, there's no one there to sort of support you, encourage you, answer your questions to help you through it. I mean, yeah, we, we do what we can, and especially in the mastermind group, but there's no one sort of making you do it. But when you're in flight school and you have to do it in real time, um, it's almost like I don't want Scott to be disappointed. I don't want to have to deal with the mini bat, right? Oh. It's like, I'm doing this. I'm getting them at five. I don't want to face Scott the next week and be like, I didn't mail. I didn't mark it and, and have to deal with that. It's like, it's almost like it becomes like, I want to just do it just for Scott's approval. And then you graduate from that. And then it's like, okay, Eric is showing up every week. He's going to be asking me, what have I done this week? And you don't want to disappoint Eric. And, and just, you know, even, you know, to kind of fuel you on those during those dips, I think it's really critical. I don't know if you guys feel that way or not. Hopefully you do. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like, honestly, I mean, we're both really driven people and we're, you know, good at business and stuff. No way. We, we would have totally just bugged out. I mean, we need, we need yeah. those tools. We need those accountability, that accountability. We need the expertise. Um, I mean, we have this last week have dealt with one of the big weirdest, craziest issues in, in the land, uh, stuff we've done. Yeah. And thank goodness we had Eric. I mean, he just guided us through the whole thing and gave us like a template of dealing with this kind of situation that probably will come up a bunch and we'll be able to, you know, deal with this in such a professional way from the get go. You know, we didn't have to experiment and, you know, make a bunch of mistakes. You know, we're using the expertise, people who have done this for years and we're just like, hey, what should we do? And they're like, this is what you should do. And we're like, okay, perfect. This is, you don't have to learn those hard mistakes. You know, it's just such a, it's such a wonderful thing what you guys are doing. We are so thankful. Um, We can't believe you're willing to, you know, give your systems away that you've worked tons of you know trial and error out and you've developed these amazing systems and we're just thankful it's totally changed our lives you know well i mean for me that's that's the most gratifying thing now um for sure and i yeah i got i got the goosies (laughs) so instead of instead of the tip of the week um how about you tell us like your best deal so far um what you paid for it what you sold it for and how you sold it so, yeah, so it's actually like, um, I would say it's our, it's both our best and our worst deal. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a, a lot that we purchased for twelve fifty. Um, we sold it with, um, two fifty down and then one forty nine a month for 84 months, um, with a $10 a month or sorry, two fifty dollars dock fee, one fifty down and then one fifty a month for 84 months with a $10 note fee. So that comes out to, um, to over a uh, 1000% return. Um, that was also our, our stressful situation um, this last week because it turns out that the, we told the people you can't build on the property until we deed it across to you. And then they, they went over to the area from South Carolina um, within two days and then they called me and they said, we're on the lot, wrong lot and we built <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh! But I mean, it just goes to show, though, that I mean, you can make these amazing deals happen. I mean, we bought, we actually this piece of land. It looked like a desolate piece of land, and we didn't want it. This buyer ke- or that seller kept calling us over and over and over, and we're like, ah, oh, I guess we got to call this seller back and just maybe we should buy it, but we don't even want it because it didn't look good. And then we find out, okay, we buy it from him because we're like. Yeah, well, He's we negotiated it down first from 2000 to 1250. Yeah. Then we found out it has power. It had power. It he has, didn't even know. Yeah, and it has and incredible so, views and those yeah. things that we thought were. Yeah, we uh, sent our photographer out there to just take pictures. We're like, I'm sorry, did you just take pictures of the wrong lot? 
And he was like, no, no, this is that one. I'm like, we're like, I mean, these incredible mountain views, power on the lot. So we got the property super cheap. <laughs> wow. I had just never been out there. He had no idea. I asked him if it had power. He had no idea, you know. And so we just were like, you know, we just don't think you have a great lot, but we'll, we'll take it off your hands. <laughs> okay. I, 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 lo I love this business. Negotiate. Is this the one I told you to go back and negotiate in flight school or no? No, this is, no. Uh, this is one later. This is a later one. Okay. <laughs> but we did that one too. So. Yeah. See, Mark, that's the thing is like John and Valerie were on a, on a flight school call. It was a Q and a call and the, and I forgot the exact situation, you know, but I, I remember that it was like that, that they had this property and like either you didn't have the money for it. Uh, was that it? Or what, what was the deal with it? And I told you Valerie, I'm like, go back and reduce it. Or maybe you guys offer too much for it. I told you go back and reduce yeah, it. And then you guys back and did it. Yeah. Yeah, we did. And we went back and yeah, you just helped us have confidence in, you know, we, oh man, we had just no idea what we were doing starting off, but you know, Scott telling us to go back confidently, tell the seller this, remember you're, you know, you're doing them a favor <laughs> now taking this land off their hands. And so when you kind of act like that, it's like, Hey, like, you know, we're picking up a bunch of land, like maybe we'll pick yours up, you know, kind of having that, that sort of mind frame can help you, you know, get your best deals. And I, I remember Tate once saying on a podcast sometime that like you make your money when you buy the property. And I was like kind of confused when he said that, but then I was like, wow, you, he's right. Like it, you have to, you know, buy it low and then you can get these amazing returns. So that the, the purchase of the property, um, is really important, almost sometimes more important, you know, that price is more important than what you sell it for sometimes. So, um, yeah, it, that was, that was super helpful, Scott, when you had us go back and do that. So. I'm looking for the comment because it was good. I, I want to remind myself. <laughs> well, you know, you guys, this has been an amazing, amazing podcast. I'm, I'm so, so grateful that you took the time to share your stories with, um, with everyone. And it's so inspirational. And uh, you're, you know, this, this, you know, young, beautiful couple raising a family and, but now you're doing it in alignment with your values of, you know, family first, you know, mm -hmm. spending time, having that freedom, having that flexibility. And we're going to do what we need to do to accomplish that. And I'm, I feel just lucky that you found us. Right. You could have done it in a different model, but I think that this model really suits you in a way that it's, you know, you're gonna be able to travel the world with your children and, you know, keep oh. this growing and building and, uh, and, and live the life of your dreams. And it's just yeah. amazing to watch. And well, it's, and it's really weird to us that we're on the podcast because like, it was just like a little while ago, less than yeah. a year ago that we just kind of heard this, you know, um, yeah. But it just goes to show, you know, um, this is possible and it's so worth it. It's worth the hard work. You know, it's not a magic bullet. It is in a, in a way because it's a plug and play system, but you have to be a, a willing to put the work into it and you have to take action, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Scott Todd, tip of the week. Oh, how, how do I take away from I know, uh, I know. I mean, that's that. the thing. Like, do we even do a tip of the week? No, we're going to have to pass today, Mark. <laughs> I, think the, I think the tip of the week is, you know, if, if you know John and Valerie can do it, they got a big life, right? Not everyone is going to have two small children or start this being pregnant and have a full-time job. If they can do it and they were able to, to get up at five in the morning, go to bed late, take action, follow the recipe with Scott, you can do it too. It's so inspirational. Listen to this podcast again and again, and just know that, you know, I'm not special. Scott's special, but John and Valerie, you know, are like, we're, we're all just do like, we just had a big oh. why and, <laughs> yeah. and just executed on it and nothing was going to stand in our way and, and do it. So uh, I want to thank you guys so much. It's, you know, it's, it's so, so wonderful to hear. And, um, We'll, uh, 
Yeah, if, if anyone, you know, wants to reach out to us at any point and needs some encouragement too, like we can, have, you know, let us know because we, we can, um, we can just kind of tell you our story or whatever and, and um, help you push through as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're on the fence, fence about flight school, we'll have you call John and Valerie. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we'll talk to you about it. Yeah. All right. So um, I want to thank all the listeners. You know, please, if you're enjoying the podcast, you're getting value out of it, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us the screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Uh, or I'm sorry, the Passive Income Launch Kit, which is a $97 course for free. So please do that. All right. Are we ready? We're going to do this? Go, Mark. Ready? One, two, two three. three. Let freedom ring. And they did it. Wow. Let freedom ring, Mark. It's good. It's good. They They're, seriously yeah. did. They, they got freedom. Yeah. 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 That's what it is. It really, really is. It feels really great, Scott, just like you said. That's great. All right. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. <laughs>